AutoCAD 2010 gives you 3D power to explore your ideas in almost any shape imaginable. Imagine designing a new camera body that is freeform and flowing. The many new and improved 3D design tools are easily accessible from the AutoCAD ribbon when the 3D modeling workspace is active. You might start with a 3D mesh primitive such as a box. You can specify default tessellation values for each type of primitive. To design the new camera body, for example, you might want a few additional tessellation divisions along the length of the camera. Begin drawing a simple mesh box providing approximate values for the length, width, and height. Notice the additional mesh tessellations along the length compared to the width and height. Form the camera shape by editing individual mesh faces, pressing the control key as you select each face. The intuitive 3D gizmo automatically displays, enabling you to constrain the movement of the selected objects to a specific plane or axis. You can just as easily edit individual edges or vertices. A new sub-object filter makes it easy for you to specify which of these sub-objects should take precedence when you select. Setting the sub-object filter to edge, for example, ensures that if you select on the edge of a face, AutoCAD will choose the edge rather than the face. To continue forming the camera body, you can stretch the front edges forward, and maybe you want to stretch the top edges down. The camera is starting to take shape, but it needs to be smoothed out. You can easily apply smoothness to the mesh objects, increasing the smoothness value as needed. Even after you've applied smoothness to the mesh, you can continue editing its shape. So far, we've used the 3D gizmo to move the selected objects, but you can also use it to rotate and scale objects. Use it, for example, to scale the center face of the front of the camera body for the camera lens. Using the right-click menu on the gizmo, you can select the scale option and then, either from the right-click menu or the gizmo icon, constrain the scale operation to the ZX plane. To make the lens opening more symmetrical, you can perform an additional scale operation along the Z-axis, and maybe move it up along the Z-axis just a little. Now the face is ready to be extruded. You can use a similar process to form the eyepiece on the back of the camera. The intuitive and predictable sub-object selection and 3D gizmos combine with the powerful free-form capabilities of meshes, enabling you to create your models quickly and efficiently. The eyepiece is almost done, but instead of having a curved lens, maybe you want it to be flat. The crease tool enables you to crease selected mesh geometry so that it remains unaffected by the mesh smoothness. Notice the hard edges that are formed on the eyepiece lens. Finally, you can scale down the lens and move it slightly into the eyepiece. 